Hi, Ma! This is the first series to be presented by... Casting! Presented by animals! Look out! Farm animals, please! Farm animals only! We're tired of appearing in documentaries... Hey, hey! ...in which we look ridiculous! Ready? Because the show is about to begin! Don't move! Give us a big ollie ollie! <laughs> ollie ollie -oo! Please, do not feed the bear. Titan's going up! The director's in his chair! It's showtime, folks! Say a little prayer. Welcome to the TV viewers, welcome to the show. We're your friends, the two new ones, we'd like to say hello. We can tell you things that every human comes to know. It's the crazy TV television show! Howdy, howdy, you! That's one flattened hyena troublemaker. Now, will you please get rid of him so we can continue? Sir, All yes, right. sir. Ah, 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 what fun. I didn't get hurt once. Hey, what's going on? Why are you taking me? Yes, sir. Hyena troublemaking virus identified and being removed from the program, boss. Now, that's funny. So, if we don't have any more interruptions, we can start the program. Ladies and gentlemen, Musk Musculus. Uh, where's the applause? <laughs> Waiting for applause here. Get the word, Poodle. Well, it's about time. <laughs> here he is at last, Mus Musculus. Sally, all you. He's so handsome. Thanks, but really, I don't deserve so much applause. Of course, you deserve applause. They're your friends. And how did such a fat-headed mouse become such a big star, I'd like to know? Me too! Hey, get my good side. Ah. I'll soon have you... 
up there. Welcome, Mus. In case you were wondering, mice are a little short-sighted, and now we brought someone here so you wouldn't feel alone with us. All I see is a bunch of rodents, common ones at that. Ronnie? Oh, my Here word. I am. What can I do for you, boss? Ronnie, when I asked you to find Mussy's family, I wasn't referring to the family of rodents. I meant the mouse family. You see? Mice and rodents, but I thought they were all the same, boss. No, oh, this one here is a mouse. Hey, where's Mus gone? Here, I'm ah! down here. Lou? Everything's fine, folks. He just needs a bit of air. There, a little stumble. He's fine. Accidents will happen. And now, while our guest recovers, I'll show you how different rodents can be from each other. And hold it. These are all rodents. They have two large incisor teeth for gnawing food, but there are differences. This is a squirrel, a great tree climber, and a dormouse, a sleepy rodent impossible to wake before April. The black and the gray rat. As you can see, they're much larger than mice. And this harmless-looking rat spread the great plague amongst humans that killed millions a few centuries ago. Don't worry, boss. I'll remember the face of that dirty rat. He won't get in here for a thousand truckloads of bananas. No, nor its dangerous cousin, the great or sewer rat. So aggressive it's feared throughout the known world. The lemming is a small rodent whose population periodically explodes. See what I mean? The giant African rat, 90 centimeters long and a lover of any shiny objects it finds. Want to buy a watch, a pretty mirror? But the biggest rodent is the capybara, measuring more than a meter 20 and weighing 30 kilos. Yo, and I'm pretty big in this game. <laughs> Slam dunk! And the mice I gotta look for, what do they look like, Ollie? Say cheese? Like this, Brawny, like the picture. They're mice like mus. That ain't my good sign. Study that and bring me some real mice. Ah! Mus? Hey, what the... Now let's see, a field mouse has a small body with a long hill oh. tail. It's got four toes on its front feet and five toes on its back feet. All dangerous stunts were filmed using doubles and no tunable was injured. They're only cartoons for goodness sake. Two inside the teeth doesn't weigh much, mouse. You must be a field mouse. Correct. Now I know what they look like. I'm gonna find some more. While Brawny's doing that, let's have a look at your teeth. We'll watch an interesting documentary. Whenever you're ready, Christopher. Here he is, the epitome of style and fashion. Allow me to present Christopher the Elegant Pig. Hello. Ah, it's Christopher! What a good-looking pig! So what's so good-looking about bacon? He's a ham! That's right! Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's try to work on those manners, shall we? My name is Christopher, and in this series, I shall be trying to teach you, the audience, the qualities of good manners and elegance, well, better. So now, let us continue. I am going to introduce you to one of the most dangerous species living on this planet. And I mean dangerous. They're all hunters. They destroy nature. And they are disgusting. I refer, of course, to Homo sapiens. Ladies and gentlemen, here with us today, the filthy, the beastly, the horrid Hunker and Punker. This is Hunker and Punker, Hunker's speciality as well. And Punker's is... Uh... Hunker! You see what I see? Disgusting, they ought to be ashamed. Uh... No! <laughs> <laughs> That's enough for today, Christopher. You're quite right. Fights, filthiness, and bad manners, and they call us animals. Uh, Until the next episode. Back to our special guest, Mus. Now, Mus, you get paid thousands of cheeses for each film. Ah, oh, don't mention that word, Ollie. Cheese makes me sick. <laughs> All the Tunables were wondering where you came from, and the answer's here in this book. Tell us about your childhood, Mus. Uh, I'm a little busy. In your autobiography, The Son of a Farmer Who Became a Film Star, you reveal your great secret. You were born to a humble family of field mice. I've never denied that. And that little bulge is you. You hear something, my dear? No. Oh. No. Set my stomach. I'm very hungry. We were poor. Poorer than rats. But like all mites, my parents could adapt to any environment in order to live. They trudged through forests, green fields, farmland, until they reached a turnip field. And on that momentous day, my mother said... Get out of there! This is it. <sighs> this is the place where we will make our home, and as God is our witness, may all of our many, many children grow up to be healthy and strong. May they never go hungry. Enough! Enough loafing around! Dig that net! 
this. There you go now. again. Well, what do you think of it so far? My mother was speechless upon seeing my father's magnificent construction. You want to know what I think? <laughs> You're an idiot! It's a family show. Pass forward a little. Hmm. I don't know. I just don't know. That's our pantry where we'll store all our food. Below that is the bathroom, and then there's the room for our babies. And of course, let's not forget the main family room. And everything made of first-rate natural materials. Grass, hair, and bits of old tin. My mother absolutely loved the burrow, but decided to make a few minor changes. That's natural with mites. They reorganize their nests quite often. Now then, what else have I got to change? What else? My mother's behavior was perfectly normal for a mouse, Ollie, and oh, Woo! gee, I miss living with them. Well, now, you'll be able to tell them in person, Mus, as they've come all the way from the countryside just to see you. Hey. You haven't seen them since you went to the big city. Your parents. What a schmuck. You'd think he'd have visited. Yeah. You mean my parents are really here? Oh, Ma, stop that. Come on now. We're not in the burrow now. You know your mother, son. What are you doing with that plant? Ah! Ah, while we're redecorating the set, we'll hear what Chef Barely has to say about the mice ah! of food chain. Hi, I'm Barely the Bear. Ah! Now, where was I? Hello, I'm Barely the Bear. Today in my mini food section, I'm going to talk about what kind of food You're on the air, eat. Barely! I'm what? Well, I... I uh, Holly, why'd you scare me like that for? You see, I'm not in the air at all. My feet are on the ground. I mean, uh, you're going out live. Oh, you mean you're already seeing me? Then I better start. Hello, I'm a bear's food, and I'm here to tell you that barely is a mini section of a mouse's chain. I'll die laughing. What's that so saying? Oh, I can barely get this right. Which is my camera? Is it this one? Or is it this one? This guy's too much. In case I haven't already told you, I'm in fact an expert in animal gastronomy and in animal food such as the mouse. Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, thank you. The mouse is a small rodent mammal that loves cheese. Th that's according to this sign here. No, oh. I hate cheese. Haven't you read my book? Although some mice will only eat fruit and vegetables, there are others that are omnivorous. And I suppose you're going to ask me now what that means, right? Well, you see, hold up the other card, that's it. Omnivores are animals that can eat a lot of plant food. Like all kinds of seeds and stalks. And bushes. Oh, and uh, meat. Which for mice means insects or smaller mammals. Oh. <laughs> In other words, to sum up, mice eat nearly anything. If they eat anything, do they eat whales, too? Whales? You mean whales as in whales? Of course they don't eat whales, numbskull. What I mean is, in other words, what I mean is the mouse's elementary intake includes a large variety of foods. They eat what they find where they live. Have you got that? It all sounds straightforward to me. I don't think it could be any simpler. Now it's time to take a break for these messages, which means Chef's program is nearly over. Messages? Commercials. Must I explain everything? You could explain to me later what I just read. Hey, oh! oh. I'm Ronnie the Gorilla, and I'm here to tell you how mice can eat all that. It's their rodent teeth. We remind viewers again that no tunnels were injured during filming. Hey, they're cartoons. That's what they're for. Hey, just a minute now. Are you sure this King Kong knows what he's supposed to do? Let's try these rodent teeth. They're so well developed and so strong, they can cut through just about anything. But you have to know how to use them. Ah, help me. Will somebody please call the cartoon producer? I leave all my worldly goods to my brothers and sisters. They hold the food with their paws and press it in against their body. Then they start gnawing the food, moving it however they want. That should be enough. The good thing about these incisor teeth is that they continue to grow throughout the three years that all mice live. Three years? At the rate this big ape is going, I won't make three days. Hey! Well, we're learning more and more things about mice. But tell us more about your life, Mus. Well, when my mother had her sixth litter of the year, which is quite common for us mice, I knew there wasn't going to be enough food available for the whole family. So I decided to emigrate, and I sure did miss my brothers and sisters. Six litters in one year and eight mice per litter? Nearly 50 siblings in a year! Wow! When I arrived in the big city, I felt at home right away. I got that kind of warm feeling a stranger only gets amongst other strangers. Get along! 
bone of the pea brain. Yeah, he'd make a nice fat dessert. Come here, my sweet. <laughs> I had decided to stay in the city, and that's what I was going to do. I was gonna become a star! I'm Polo the Stork. I'm an expert in travel and geography. If there is one species we can find almost anywhere on the planet, it's mice, since they really are all over the planet, except in the coldest areas like the North Pole, Greenland, and Alaska. <laughs> And in the Antarctic South. Hey. Those more fortunate mice are able to live and breed anywhere as long as the temperature remains between 20 degrees below zero and 35 degrees above zero. And that's it, I think. Uh, yes, thank you. to Mus's life. Keep watching the screen and don't touch that dial. In the city, I learned how to be a true house mouse. House mice have it easy. They don't need to travel miles and miles to find some measly seeds, do we? Human beings provide them with all sorts of food. And what variety? Hold it, freeze frame! If I'm not wrong, according to your book, it was there that you first tasted cheese. That's a lie! <laughs> No Tunamo was injured in the series. It's a cartoon. Why not worry about what your kids are doing to the pet? I'm not going to say this again. It isn't real. It's a cartoon. Now go away and don't bother me. We field mice will look down on. I wanted to be a city mouse, hey. so I put myself in the hands of a top special. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I don't want to look like a city mouse. He got rid of my fat field mouse look, lengthened my nose, and made my ears larger using shock treatment. <laughs> And he had to make my tail shorter and thinner to complete the look. I had the body of a city mouse, but my big eyes made me look like a field mouse, so I told the specialist, give me a new face. It's not so bad being a field mouse. You can do all kinds of stuff. Are you sure you don't want to be yourself anymore? Because if you are... Yeah, oh boy, I just want to succeed. So you want to be a somebody, do you? We had to try several times for the right results. Hey, is that a wrap? <laughs> Wrong. Hey, we did it! I fought and fought until I looked like a star. In spite of my new look, it wasn't easy adapting to city life. Maybe because you mice are short-sighted and can't see more than 10 centimeters away. <laughs> What did you say, Ollie? Oh, nothing. Let us continue. I wanted to be accepted, so I took an important step. <laughs> oh, yes? And what was this step? Marriage. By following my nose, I found the perfect lady mouse. Hey! Wow! Would you please be the mother of my children? I'll ask. You'll ask? My family, silly. For you to be accepted, they had to sniff you? No other choice. If a mouse doesn't have the family smell, they ignore him or attack him. After receiving so much affection, I ended up smelling just like one of them. And so I married my little mousy and very soon had descendants. How did you feel when you saw your babies for the first time? Emotional, Molly. Hey, what are these things here, huh? I knew immediately they were my children. Come on, honey, how did I know? It's the first time I've had kids. Come on, let me in. What a happy time that was. She nursed all six little ones for three weeks. It was quite something watching their development. I don't believe it. A white mouse in my litter. You've been unfaithful. How dare you? Come on, I didn't know some mice can be born white. Nobody told me about all that pigmentation stuff. What am I, a library mouse or something? About that time, you left your home and built a second one. How come? Weren't things going too well for you at home? Oh, no. We mice regularly go and build two burrows. One for her to have the babies and the other one for the male in case of danger. Danger? What were you running away from? You call a babysitter? You kidding? After a year of living together, she's already had six litters, about 50 pipsqueaks. You need an experienced childminder, so... Tackle that tight end! 
After eight weeks, they didn't want to become independent like they were supposed to. Help! Help! Ah, help! Someone call the Society for the Protection of Cartoon Animals! Ah! This week's question is about mice. How many babies can a pair have in a lifetime? 60, 90, or 150? Any bets? Next, the ad that made Mus famous, then the end of the interview, and that question answered. Dear friends, we mice spend a lot of time looking after our bodies. Especially our heads and paws. Our whiskers, our arms. Our tail, of course. Under our arms and generally all over our bodies. But how do we maintain our cutting edge? Yes, that's right, lady. Here we have the very latest in personal hygiene, the Tunimals Incisor Brush, made especially for us rodents that can reach all parts of your teeth. Cut! Yes, sir, the Tunimals Incisor Brush, the most incisive and popular brush on the market. Hey, because you're worth it. From that point, you started to receive lots of offers of lead roles in the films that eventually made you a famous star. The only mouse to leave his prints on the Boulevard of Fame alongside human stars. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ollie. By the way, is it true you mice have prospered thanks to man? Sure. We've had an ongoing relationship with man for thousands of years. We've accompanied him on all his journeys, and that's how we've spread ourselves around the whole world. That's right. And you also help men in return, especially albinos or white mice. They're the ones used in research. What are you doing, Dee Dee? Are you going to tell us? You wouldn't be painting him white so he has to take part in experiments, would you? Well, that's all for today. Uh, thank you, Mus. Uh, hey, Ollie, can I just say something in front of the cameras? Yes, of course. There's something that I forgot to mention in my book, and I would like to say it now. To develop and adapt is good, but never forget your roots, and don't ever be ashamed of where you come from. I did that, and I'm sorry I did. Oh, come to Mama, my darling son. And although we're short-sighted, I'm still a field mouse. Oh. Here. Oh, I'm real proud of you, oh, son. <laughs> is it over yet, Pupso? <laughs> Oh, don't get all mushy on me. This is a Tunimals exclusive. <laughs> yeah, it's cheese. Oh, you were saying. I'm a cheese. See you next week. Ali, Ali. <laughs> Just a minute. What? Oh, of course. Well, they tell me our first program has been a great success with a very high audience rating. Thanks for your support, Ali, Ali. <laughs> Ali, Ali. Welcome to the show. We're your friends of two nibbles. We like to say hello. We can tell you things that every human can.